you've had a much better introduction into like its heating design than I had by far. Yeah. What I did was peer to peer with people on Facebook. So if I, I had those exact same questions and I would ask other people and we'd bounce around and in talking to each other and trying to figure it out, you kind of understand it better because you're talking out. Well, that's what I was going to say. Should I just throw this in the heat heat mastery? Mastermind yeah, thing, all that so sort of thing, yes. See what people come up with. Yeah, definitely. Because um, uh, also, they might come up with something different. Uh, the only reason I'm answering this from a kind of authoritative thing is because I've been through this conversation hundreds of times. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be a two-way thing. I feel thing. like it's a, it's a question that a lot of installers are asking or seeing yeah. online. Yeah. That, oh, I need to fit a low-loss header. Oh, I need to put a... Like the amount of times I've seen one company in particular yeah. put about five pumps on one system. Yeah, yeah. Pump from the heat pump, pump in line, pump on the underfloor manifold, yeah. pump to zone every circuit. No, yeah, uh, people do it because it looks better, I think. So they're doing this. Or putting a pump on the return too, because the flow rate. As well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, because they, they can't get in. the flow rate down, so they put a pump there too. As well, even with a lower setter. Yeah, yeah that means that pump's undersized. That's just totally wrong, so I'm not going to go into that. That is the sort of thing you were designed for a shopping centre, and people are doing it for heating systems in the UK. Houses, yeah. um, what they want to do is, they've probably even designed this pump hugely, even though it's doing a tiny little circuit because it's got the correct volume. What they really want to do if they want to maximise cop is take out the lower header, don't use as much uh, Unistrut, it's just not needed. <laughs> take out these pumps, and just put good old fashioned zone valves in, which don't look as sexy for social media. And then if you put that on proportional pressure, that will vary its flow rate accordingly to the zones being open, or even better, get a DT pump and put a sensor on here, and that will rectify for whatever DT you set, depending on the load on the system. Um, ideally though, again, these valves are all great being there, but I don't really ever want to see these closed. No. These want to be open. The only time these close are when hot water's on. So they're pretty yeah. better off being normally open and then closing down for once a day to do hot water or twice a day to do hot water. Yeah. And then that's A, that's much more simple uh, to look at and understand and fix. B, it's cheaper for the customer. C, they'd be getting better cops. D, they're install it for cheap. You know, it's less work to install. It's just, there's no downside to making it simpler. It's only, oh, the only downside. I, do you know, it's a fair enough point that they might want to show uh, on social media or their marketing what they can install them to make it look good. That's a fair enough point but not under the guise that it's more efficient because it's not more efficient yeah. at all. We are so excited to be facilitating exclusive training for the next generation of heating masters. The Heat Geek courses are designed to take you from heating installer to heating god with the ability to design hydronic systems from scratch, massively increasing your value as a heating engineer and earn yourself a recognized certification. Let us teach you the skills you need to charge more for your services and future-proof your career.